Hello everyone here at OS Reviews. Today we're taking a look at some tips and tricks for Flyme OS, which is the proprietary skin on top of Android by Meizu, which is a Chinese manufacturer, but like Xiaomi, they do produce some more quality handsets than many of the other more generic phones on the market, such as Elephone. So Flyme OS is what's found on all of their devices, whether it's the Pro 7 that you see here or some of the newer Meizu phones with a 18 by 9 aspect ratio display and does give you a pretty complete customization that feels quite different from what stock Android feels like. For starters, you can wake the display by double tapping and I can also put it back to sleep by double tapping again, so it's a gesture that works quite well. Going into the main home screen here, what's also different is even with phones that have a slightly larger bezel because they're older, Meizu gives you the option of hiding the software controls on the bottom, such as home, back, and menu. You can hide them from view completely because they give you swipe gestures for things like multitasking. You can swipe from the bottom bezel to the top here to take a look at previously open applications, which are displayed kind of like cards on webOS or on the newer iOS, and you're able to jump back and forth between these programs or flick up to close them out completely. So it's a pretty sleek uh, overall setup that takes a few seconds to get used to, but afterwards it feels very intuitive. Under the settings and accessibility, you're also able to kind of change what the task manager looks like. So right now we have a horizontal layout, which is like this, but I can change it to vertical as well. So I can flick up and it looks like a more stock uh, Android 7.0 device. That's how they're displayed. So you can flip up and down to go through apps. So for instance, if I open the clock now and now flick up, this is you know how the traditional Android experience looks like. But I personally prefer the horizontal layout, so I'm gonna go back to that. The next tip here is going to be about gestures. So we talked about how double tap can wake the device, but you can also perform other gestures even when the screen is turned off. Some of these ideas we've seen before on other phones, but Flyme is pretty complete when it gives you a lot of customization options. So for instance, a O gesture, you can then map it to a specific program that you can choose, or you can also do a slide up to unlock, which is another one. So for instance, I can slide up and that will unlock the phone. So going back again, we also have something called Smart Touch. Now Smart Touch is basically this assistive touch dot on the very bottom there that you can flick up, down, left, and right to create different actions. Uh, maybe have smaller hands and your phone's display is too tall for you to reach down and then drag down a notification tray. You can just flick down, for instance, to access that. So that's actually pretty easy to use. And by default, these are the commands. I can tap once to go back. I can hold on this dot for a few seconds to move it around freely to rearrange it onto a different corner. I can also slide up to go back to the home screen, slide down for notification shade, left and right to switch between currently open programs. I can also access something called easy mode under settings. So if I enable easy mode, it basically gives me the simplified interface, which uh, both saves on battery and makes it the phone a lot easier to use for first time smartphone users, for, el for the elderly, and maybe for kids. Here's what settings looks like under the easy mode. Beyond this, Flyme OS offers very similar functions of customization and personalization as MIUI and other Chinese OEMs uh, on the market, and even Samsung and other Korean phones. You can change theme packages, and what that does is basically download different icons as well as wallpapers and sets a different home and vibe for your phone uh, automatically. So that's pretty cool. You can visit their web store to download more content, and we see some more of these themes. So you can really just customize this completely to the way that you like. Obviously, you can do that by yourself too if you want to install something like BlackBerry Launcher or a Google Now Launcher if you want a more stock feeling uh, handset, but Meizu gives you a few of their uh, options that they design. Next, because Meizu phones are primarily made in China and sold for the Chinese demographic, you also have a secondary app store, which although really isn't a huge selling point, it is a tip that you guys can consider if you want to look at. It's uh, basically the same content as you can find give and take in the regular Google Play Store, which most Meizu phones also do have. But occasionally you can find some differences in pricing, so some games can be a little cheaper, and you may be able to find a few apps which are exclusive for Asian markets that you otherwise aren't able to find in the Play Store. And Meizu also throws in their own security manager, which can be useful if you want to quickly glance and see if your phone is uh, securely uh, optimized in terms of uh, not storing too much content in the cache memory, in terms of having apps which are installed through either the Play Store or the Meizu Store and not sideloaded, and it will scan through all your files to tell you that, whether your phone is secure or not, and you can optimize it. You're also able to clean out the, the memory, the RAM, as well as uh, check on the battery information and block certain websites. So Flyme OS also throws 
throws in a handful of tools by default, which are actually pretty cool, and they're designed for Meizu uh, in the ground up. So it includes a toolbox that gives you things like a flashlight, a level tool, which uses the uh, accelerometer and the gyroscopes to do that. There's even a magnifier that uses the camera and tries to make text a little bit larger, again, catering for uh, older audiences. There's even a decibel meter that can tell you how loud your uh, environment is, which is a pretty neat little built-in trick. And there's also a ruler that you can access for measuring things which are the size of the phone's display. Are built on in for you to uh, access if you do want to you know, use them occasionally. So that's more or less it as far as our quick tips and tricks unique to the Flyme OS experience. Uh, as you can tell, it's a very customizable UI, which is a good thing because you can change it to your liking. You can always slap a standard Google Now launcher if you don't like what you see here, but it does give you some pretty neat ideas. I also really like the kind of visuals that Meizu brings to their icons and packages, which just looks very neat. It reminds me of something like Ubuntu Mobile, which uh, is a very elegant OS. And uh, overall, again, a lot of clever ideas, even though it's not the most full featured UI, but this feels pretty clean and well optimized and many of the gestures are very fun as well as intuitive to use. So you can check out more details about this in the links down below, but for now this has been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. That was a closer dive at the Flyme OS by Meizu.